Have you ever tried to learn Salesforce development or programming and have been completely overwhelmed? Maybe you've stopped and started and got stuck and then gave up. Well, that's a very common thing that I hear from new developers and I've been developing for a long time on this platform. And what I'm going to do in this video is go over all of the different resources and steps that I, I would take if I was learning again how to become a Salesforce developer in 2024. Let's get started. So if you didn't know, I'm Walters954, 18 times certified Salesforce developer, MVP. I've been doing this for a long time, but that long time was definitely a windy road, right? I went to school for development. I didn't really learn too much. I learned so much on the job, but there are a ton of different resources and things but I stuck with it. And sometimes that grit can really help you out. But there are other times where you can lose confidence in your abilities to learn and stay focused. And this is where a video like this will help you cut through all of those different resources and things like that to focus on exactly what you need to become a Salesforce developer. So to start, you need to figure out what Salesforce actually is. Some people may have just heard it or talked to their friend who's making a ridiculous amount of money in Salesforce and they kind of tell them, hey, you should look into this thing, but you don't know what Salesforce is. Well, the first place to start is Trailhead. It's Salesforce's free learning platform where you can go on and start learning about Salesforce and the different features, functionalities that it has, where you can take those baby steps to understanding what the CRM is. Everybody should understand what Salesforce is, regardless of if you're going down the admin path, developer, consultant, whatever it is, you need to get that baseline understanding of what Salesforce is before you can kind of move on to the next steps of starting even developing on the platform. Also start to understand if you have transferable skills that can work with the Salesforce ecosystem. So you'll see a lot of different business use cases in Trailhead or even videos and content that you consume. And then you can start to think about, well, I have worked in that industry or I have these specific skills. How can they then translate into a Salesforce job or a Salesforce role? Now that you may think that's getting a little bit ahead of yourself, but what you'll see is that if you start planning these things out properly, you can end up with an awesome role in an awesome industry that you are able to connect with right away and jump into whatever type of role that you are looking for. What I would also recommend if you have not been in the Salesforce ecosystem for any amount of time is to grab the Salesforce associate certification. This is a baseline certification that kind of proves that you understand what Salesforce is. This certification is $75 and is multiple choice. And if you fail, you can retake without there being an additional charge for it. I think this is a great one to pick up for beginners. Getting those Salesforce basics down may not take you that long. I would think maybe a month or two if you are brand new and grabbing that associate certification. So hit those trailhead badges and start learning about Salesforce so you can build up your knowledge as you go. It'll really help you out on your development journey. And I've also linked in the description a trailhead trail mix for the associate exam so that you have something to follow along with, something to lead you down a path to completing that associate certification. Okay, now let's get into some of the fun stuff. Let's talk about programming fundamentals. These are things like the basics, right? How to create variables, data types, flow control, all the things that you kind of see on the screen, especially in movies when hackers are typing up and you're seeing a bunch of stuff on the screen. This is where all of those things kind of come from. You need to learn the syntax of Apex, which is the development language that is used in the Salesforce ecosystem so that you can create different programs and business logic. Data types and variables are great, but that is just scratching the surface. We need to continue going deeper, even in this fundamentals level, to understand things like object-oriented programming. So this is the programming paradigm that is used in Apex so that you can create all of this amazing business logic. I have a few resources that I'm going to recommend. CS50, which is a Harvard taught computer science program. It's basically an introduction to computer science. It is a really great series to understand the fundamentals of programming. Code Academy, which is another free resource that you can use to get hands on with many different programming languages. I would recommend that you start with Java because it will get you hands on. And Java is actually very similar to Apex. And of course, once again, there are a bunch of different trailheads that are really great for learning Salesforce development. 
and I'll be linking down below the developer beginning trail so that you can get started very easily. Now these are very different resources. CS50 is a long video series and what I want you to think about there is potentially watching a few hours every day or a few hours a week so that you can start to build up that programming mindset. And then for Code Academy, this is when you have more time to get hands on and focus for a long duration on building out something. And then on the trailhead side, this is where you can actually change all of the ethereal pieces and the things that are just theory, right? And put it into a Salesforce context. This will help you mold everything that you are learning into a context that you can bring to different businesses and so you can land that job. I would expect it to take you two to three months to get through all of this content as you are still learning how to program and how it all fits into a Salesforce context. One other really cool thing that you're gonna start to see as you're getting more hands-on and learning all of these different concepts is if you actually like programming. Now, there are various different avenues that you can go down. Some people learn development so that they can become developers and get those high paying salaries. Some just want to understand code so that they can speak more confidently to their peers or anybody that they actually work with, right? When you're in those types of technical meetings and some people are learning it so that they can pass certain certifications that Salesforce has. Now this may be the platform developer one certification. Now this is very dev heavy and a technical certification that you may struggle with if you don't know some of the fundamentals and basics of programming. With that in mind, let's talk about goal setting. And this should be part of your journey, and especially if you've now done maybe one to three months of practicing programming and getting your associate cert, it is time to start really focusing in on what are your goals, right? Do you want that job? Do you want to understand? Or do you want to pass the certification? And it's okay if you want all three of those, but now you need to potentially start focusing in your studying and your learning so that you can hit whatever goals you're trying to achieve. Looking at all those different avenues that you might go down, this is where I would start to think, especially if I'm starting brand new, that I need to start setting specific goals that I want to achieve. And the way that I do this now, and I would hopefully tell my younger self to do, is to set goals on a quarterly basis. So spend time focusing on one thing for a quarter. This may be understanding triggers, understanding object-oriented programming, even studying for the PD-1 exam, whatever it is, is focus on that for a quarter and then reevaluate how well I did. Did I meet the goal? Did I surpass it? Did I drop down? Do I need to change it? Reevaluate that at the quarter mark. This will help you not being pulled in a bunch of different areas as you start learning new things. Oh, I see there are trigger frameworks. Oh, there is AI. I really want to learn that. Start writing down all those things that you want to learn and then put them in your notes, however you're keeping track of things, so that once that quarter mark comes around, you can then pick the next thing that you want to focus on. Now that we know the basics, we have our fundamentals down and we have a clear goal. Maybe it's to learn Apex triggers or just get a better understanding of Salesforce development in general, which is fine. You're learning the landscape. Let's start talking about what we need to start knowing as a Salesforce developer, right? Because there are different types of developers out there. There are a lot of things that Salesforce developers should know, but if I was going to kind of focus on some of the things that would potentially get me a job just getting started, then it would be learning your SQL queries, the different data types that exist, DML operations, triggers, and probably sprinkling a little bit of integrations because employers love that. If you have a passion for web design or really like JavaScript, then look into Lightning Web Components because that is your bread and butter where you'll be able to create custom user interfaces. You can also start jumping into specific trailhead modules that you are trying to learn and pulling things from maybe the advanced or the intermediate trails so that you can start brushing up on even more complex topics. This is where you should start getting even more hands-on and potentially building out your GitHub portfolio and different repositories that you want to create. If you've never heard of GitHub, it is a centralized place for all of your code to go. And you can even showcase your code to different recruiters, hiring managers. And I would really encourage you once you hit this stage of really diving deeper into Salesforce development, you need to have a lot of your code in a place that other people can see it. 
Let's talk about some resources that can help you once you're at this Salesforce development fundamental stage. And I really recommend Camp Apex, which is very similar to Code Academy, where you can get hands on, but this time it's specific in Apex and apexsandbox.io, which is another site where you can get hands on and do different challenges in a this is very similar to leak code but it is apex specific this is also where i kind of recommend to start sprinkling in some of the ai tools i personally recommend chat gpt for helping debug and break down issues that you have never just put in the entire problem or whatever you're trying to build out have chat gpt or these other ai tools as you're just starting out help you debug so putting in a specific line and asking what's wrong or can you explain how to fix this versus doing the entire thing for you that will not help you when you're on an interview i see that taking about two to three months to get those apex fundamentals down and you're potentially job ready with some sort of personal project that you can show off at this point everything that i just went over is potentially like a six to eight month journey of learning programming and salesforce development and that is okay but i want to also give you some tips and some hints that i would have loved to have known when i was first getting started so i can supercharge my learning and my job hunting prospects as i'm going along one of the big areas and you'll hear it very often is networking i would encourage you you to go to as many Salesforce events as possible, especially the free ones or the dreaming events. This is a great place to meet other Salesforce professionals, learn about your local area and what the job market looks like. And if you don't have one in your local area, check out some of the virtual community groups that exist and they are very welcoming. Also, don't miss out on the conferences, especially the local ones. Now, the huge ones are definitely very expensive, but there is a lot of different Salesforce professionals that go there and you will continue to build out your network as you go to these events, see the same people, talk to them and start to work with them in the future. Of course, there's the big one, LinkedIn, get on there, update your profile, make sure that it is polished and the recruiters and different hiring managers can find you on there because it is super important. That is your public facing resume that you want to have available for anybody looking for someone with your skill set. Attend any and all free events that are out there. This could be clicked or certification days, different webinars that are put on by people like Salesforce Ben. Attend all of those and absorb as much Salesforce information as you you can so that you can be a part of the ecosystem and understand how everything starts to work together. Let me know in the comments if I've missed any networking or community events that have worked for you. I would love to add to this list. Now let's talk about ways of standing out as a Salesforce developer. And of course, the big one is the Platform Developer One certification. This is the main cert that developers get so that they can showcase their expertise in Salesforce development. Once again, this one is very hard and technical, which may require you to read some code. But if you've been going along through all of these steps and building up your programming fundamentals, your apex fundamentals, then you should not have a problem passing this exam. This exam really gets your foot in the door and it puts a big signal to employers, recruiters and hiring managers that you want to go down the developer route. So you may start to receive different DMs from hiring managers and different people looking for developers once you get this certification on your LinkedIn profile and put yourself out there. You should also start to build lots of personal projects. These can be very hyper-focused on Salesforce Apex or even Lightning Web Components, but you can also dabble in other programming languages like Java and JavaScript because those are easy to translate over. And the great things about this, when you show these things to hiring managers, they will start to see how they can morph that or change what you have done into things that they need at their actual companies. To go alongside with this, having all of your code inside of GitHub so it's easy to be shared with those people that are interested in looking at what your code is like and seeing your coding style and the different standards that you keep your code up to. Starting a blog or a YouTube channel that kind of documents your journey and people can go along with you is really great to get your name 
name out there and to show for hiring managers so that they can see your progression as you learn new things as a Salesforce developer. Now let's talk about some growth mindset things that I would have loved to have known as a younger developer. One of the big ones is staying motivated. So imposter syndrome is a real thing. It is really easy to lose confidence in your work when you are stuck and don't know where to go. This is where I would recommend you find your tribe. There are Discord troops, there's a Salesforce mentor Slack community, and so many different areas that you can go to find other people that are just like you and can help lift you up and boost you with that confidence as you work towards your goals together. Start applying for jobs before you think you're ready. I've seen so many students and I struggled with this myself when I was first learning. I did not want to apply to anything until I was perfect, right? The amazing coding machine. And that is not how things actually work. Even when I got in my first development job, I still knew absolutely nothing and that is okay. Especially as a junior developer, it's kind of expected as you go through it. So start applying for jobs earlier than you think you are ready. And don't worry about all of those lists of requirements that are on job descriptions. Job descriptions are a wish list. It's pretty hard to find a candidate that checks off all the boxes and companies probably can't afford that person anyways. So start applying before you think you are ready. Use this as a test for your resume and your interviewing skills as you continue to apply for multiple jobs. Let me know in the comments down below if you think these resources are helpful or if you have other resources that could help devs as they are just getting started in development. This outline and resources should help you stay more focused on Salesforce development and potentially landing your first job. But I want you to remember to get that hands-on experience and basically code every day as you're going on. I'm Walters954. Thanks so much for watching. And remember, I believe in you.